Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorso and channel is called Ethernet Wink and today I'm going to show you guys how to make another future shooting algorithm. Now, recording this on Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day, happy CPI Day as well. Um, before we get into this, I hope you guys, hope you guys all have a little bit of talent here in your portfolio. I know I do, I know I'm enjoying these recent gains that we've had, very good trades I've had on them in the past, um, a very good holding I have right now. So. What are we going to do in this tutorial? There's already a lot of code here. You know how I am. If I explain something really in depth in the previous video, I'll just let you know to go into there, but I will explain everything as we go and show you guys what you would need to add to make this strategy. Now, what is this strategy? Before we get into the code, I'll illustrate that a little bit for you guys. Uh, let's say that the black line is price in some world that spells price. There we go. Whatever. So let's say over the past 20 days, because that's what our we'll make our rolling window, price has looked like that. That's not a thing. Let it short. That is that. Yeah, that's good. So for our long condition, what we're gonna look at is if in the past 20 days we see a break before, break above the high. And for short conditions, we see a break below the low if I that's fine <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is we're going to add something to make sure that our scenario I'm struggling to draw that we've got there. Okay. Alright, let's talk about this now. So here would be our long condition. Here would be our short condition, and here's some of the main explanation. So, if in the past 20 days, we see price break above our high by a nice margin, you want to go long. Oh, that's not the right color. You want to go long, and basically try and bet on that momentum to continue. Now, for the short, we look at a break of the short one, and look at if there's confirmation, and then bet on that to continue. Now, here's what I mean by confirmation. What we're going to do is make sure that we break out by a certain amount. Make sure that there's actually some relative strength there for us to capitalize because we don't want some of this to have a break and then a rejection to come down. So we're going to try our best to add something that will make that um, not happen and also leave us with a lot of the momentum to capture. So to just recap, break of past 20 day high, a long break of past 20 day short day low or short in a nutshell. Now, I'm going to explain what code we have in here, and then we're going to get into this on data method and a different function I haven't talked about at all on this channel yet. So, if you guys don't know how to deal with this, we're just declaring our future, setting our time filter, and saving the variable of it for the symbol. Alright, simple enough. One thing I want to add from our previous algorithms that have all been shorter term ones, this one is in re resolution bet daily because we want to store the daily high and lows into our rolling window. And we want to make trades with daily confirmation. So we're going to set that to that. There's, a, there's some more variables down here, but I'll explain those in a second. We have our long and short contract symbols to be able to control the holdings. And we have a long and short entry ticket. And we also have an entry time. What are these about? Well, when you scroll down here to our short and buy future methods, we can see that now we're going to be using limiters. Why is that? That is because we're going to use something called bracket orders in this future trading algorithm. I have not found a video, an easy to find discussion forum. Um, I, I don't like the way that Quant Connect has any like the key concepts. I, don't, I haven't found anything for bracket orders on futures. And so that's what I want to provide in this video. Just got to grab my water. I don't know why I had it so far. So, just um, you can obviously just pause this and make sure you copy it all down correctly. It's in all the, it's in previous videos as well. What I like to do is store code in a Google Doc, and I have a separate screen to keep it up there, or even just in another tab, just so that way you can bounce back and forth and only have to code things once, and then just copy and paste it whenever, whenever you need it, you'll have it. All right. So, 
you can just go over the, diff the differences. We're just storing the price in a variable. We don't even really have to do that. We could just have that down there, but it doesn't matter. The computer's fastening, so that doesn't matter. And then we're going to store our order, our limit order, into a variable. All right, that is all. Now, we got to add one more variable to our initialize before we get started, and that is the rolling window itself. All right, so what will that look like? We're going to make it a self variable. I'm just going to say self dot price window. I'm going to say equal to rolling window. Size is going to be 20. And this is very important. It will store quote bars. Why is that important that it stores quote bars? Because since we're doing it with futures, we literally can't store trade bars. It'll throw us an error. It doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm not sure why. That's just the way it is, and this is the way around it. Store quote bars instead of trade bars. So that's what we're going to do to make this algorithm still work well. And you can make this number whatever you want, really. I'm choosing 20. If you want to make it for a month, you can do 30. Whatever. I'm just leaving it as 20 for now. You can play around with it if you make this algorithm for yourself. And before I continue, because if you do make this algorithm yourself, do not trade real, real money with it. This is for educational purposes only. Don't trade real money with this strategy. I will, I will not be held liable. Algorithmic trading is extremely risky. Whatever, whatever, yada, yada. I can't do it as good as the trading fraternity, the whole thing. I, I, maybe, maybe I'll get to that point. But right now, this is, just don't, I don't have the little banner like he does. This is for educational purposes only. Don't trade real money with any strategy I put out there um, with open source because if it's open source, probably not great. Could be useful for you to make your own ideas, but hey, I don't know. I'm recording on OBS right now. OBS is open source. What other stuff is good in open source? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, don't trade this algorithm with real money. Back to the code now. We're going to head into our, our on data method, and we're gonna add a few things, and then right before we're ready to set our buy and sell conditions, we're going to make another function, and then we're gonna set those buy and sell conditions, and then we're gonna build and back test it, and we'll be on our way. So, in the on data method, first thing we need to do is check if the data we're getting from our symbol is data that we can store in our rolling window. What does that mean? look like it looks like this so you guys might have seen this before if you've used quantinet a little bit i'm not sure where i got that code from but i know that i didn't come up with it i think i saw it when i was researching rolling window rules on my own it might be in the quantinet just like key concepts or whatever i'll link um a discussion forum where i found something about maxes of price windows i'll link quantinet's rolling window um documentation and their um, bracket order documentation and anything else I see value after I'm done recording this video. Okay. Now, let me explain this. So, if data that, got, that contains key, so that's simple, but we have a not down here. Every, we have a not in for, uh, outside of parentheses. So everything in here, we're looking for the opposite of it to be true to do nothing. So if we do not contain data, contain keys, data for the symbol, do nothing. And if the data for self that symbol is none, because remember we have a not back there, so if the data is none, do nothing. However, if we get through that, we can add that data to our rolling window. Why can we not type there? I couldn't type at all today in school, anywhere, nowhere. I could not get my fingers on the keyboard correctly, but it's okay. Push through it. So after we add our data to our price window, that's step one done. But first, we still have to check and see if it is ready for us to use it because we don't want to use it half full. So we're going to say it's self dot price window dot is ready. Actually, we're not going to say we're going to say it's not self dot price window dot is ready. We're just going to make sure. Okay, cool. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our min and max variables. We're going to make just one variable to store the 
the high and the low of our rolling window. Now, that does not work. This will do nothing. Why? Because rolling windows are not Python objects. Max just works on Python objects. So what do we need to do? Well, if we're going to store the highs of the trade bar into a variable, we can still use max if we get them into a Python list. So what would that look like? Once again, I found this in the Quant Connect documentation that I'm going to link below. Very useful stuff, and it actually shows a different way that you can do this as well. But I'm putting it on YouTube because it's easier to find that way, and I'm going to explain it for you guys right now. So, once again, we're going to do the math. Oh, we're going to, we're going to make all this data in here a list. So since we do it in the one-liner, we're going to iterate through our price window in these brackets. That way, everything we do in our for loop gets stored in this list. So what do we want? We want, we want the high of our full bar. And remember, these are in bars. So we want bar.high for bar in self.price window. We could make this okay that's weird um <laughs> i'm not sure why that happened but we can make bar anything we want we could say i e any vowel any word it'll work but this is what we need to do because we're iterating through full bars full bars have attributes dot whatever and then we can store that in our list and pick out the max value because now it's a regular Python list and store it into this variable. No, it's the opposite for the low. We're going to store the lows. And we're going to pick the lowest low. And we're going to store that in our min. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of code from in here just because I want you guys to see it. And it's just good to have in any algorithm where you're trading derivatives that can expire. What this line of code does is it iterates through our entire portfolio, stores all the futures that we have invested into this list. And if future invested, if we're holding something, because we only store them if value invested is a future. So if we have shares, options, it won't matter. This will only handle the futures. And if that future invested is one day or less to expiration, we're going to liquidate it. Because we do not want to hold these things to expiration. Excuse me, sir. So that's all that's for. Um, because we use bracket orders, this never really happens, but it's always good to have. Now that we're done with that, well, we're not done. We still have to add our long and short conditions, but to make sure that we can just add them and then press play, let it go, we're going to implement another method first. We're going to do an on order event method. Okay, and itself an order them, we leave that like that. And now we got to do quite a bit in here actually. So the first thing we need to do is check if the order event is actually filled. So it's if order event dot status is not order status dot filled, do nothing. That is ensuring that we're only going to be doing bracket orders on orders that are filled. We don't want, because we may submit an order and it never gets filled, right? And we actually have to implement more code in there to make sure that if we do submit a limit order and never gets filled, we can cancel that and let the algorithm try again. I forgot about that. So we got to implement that right after this function, but that's okay. We're going to finish this up, add our long and short condition, and then add that check for our limit. So now, like up here, we have, we're going to be going long and short. When we're short something, we want to buy it back at a lower price. And when we're long something, we want to sell it at a higher price. This will make our, I just realized a little funny thing I have in my reference that is not correct. That's funny. That's whatever. It's fine because the code will, that's funny that it worked, whatever. <laughs> But 
I'll change it obviously for you guys now and make sure it's logical because this is illogical. I have my stop market price, and my limit order price all at the same same price. That's just, that's hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> We have different conditions for when, we're, for when we're long and short is pretty much what I'm trying to say. We want to set our orders to do different things at different prices. So when that's the case, we need to check what we're invested in. And that's when these order ticket variables come into play. So when our long entry ticket is not enough, that means that our long entry ticket is storing the um, from the CPM storing our order in this variable because limit order returns the order ticket instance that then goes into this variable and it's not none anymore that's pretty much what we're checking right here next we're going to check if order events dot id really is the long entry ticket another kind of double check right here Now, we get through both of those. We want to set our entry time to right now. And we want to log the price for our um, order that. Oh, price. I'm just going to copy and paste it. But now, why, why do we want to do this? Because Let's say we're long because that's the one I'm making right now. We want to multiply our price by say 1.03, so that we we have a three percent um, take profit set. Boom, right there. And we can only do that when we know what price we paid for, so that way we can multiply it by the correct value and get what we want. So we set our entry time. We store our price. Now what? Now we're going to actually send our orders. So, we're going to say self dot limit order. We're going to say order event dot symbol. We're going to say one. We can say order event dot quantity, but it is all going to be one, so that's fine. I think we can say order event dot quantity. I wonder if that comes up with that. Alright, whatever. That's fine, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I think I've seen that before, but whatever. And then whatever price we wanted to execute at. So let's say we're gonna take a seven percent. That's not how you do that. We'll set a seven percent take profit. Alright. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but we have to make it a different order. We're gonna make it a stop market order and this is useful for the one cancels other instance that way we can cancel the other order and it's not going to cancel both limit orders both stop orders it'll cancel one or the other and this is what i have in my reference right here is that it's the exact same numbers let's go one to one let's go 0 0.93 <laughs> that's that's really funny that i have it I wonder. I wonder if it'll still. It 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 turned a profit, so I'm really curious of what's gonna happen now. And bottom line is that the logic is right. I don't want you guys to trade with these algorithms anyway, so I won't be too heartbroken if it's not a good algorithm. Because from this, you're gonna learn how to do one cancels others with futures. You're gonna learn how to do bracket orders with futures. You're gonna learn how to do rolling windows with futures. That's more important. that's more useful than the actual edge we have in this video. So some food for thought. If the order event ID is not this one, that means that one of these orders got filled. So we have to cancel the other one. So we're gonna say it's all dot transactions. Get rid of that. Uh, cancel open orders. Or this is this is what would be really useful when we're trading multiple securities. We're not in this one, so we could just say self that symbol because we store it up there. But 
Actually, I'm not sure if we could do that, but we're going to stick with this one because it does help whenever we're doing it with multiple symbols. Just the symbol in this order. Okay, so now we need to set our long entry tickets back to none. It's ready to treat again, is what that basically says. Okay. Now, that's it for a long entry ticket. That's it for long. What about for short? We're going to copy and paste this color because why reinvent the wheel? Copy and paste short entry ticket, and we're going to replace it everywhere it comes up down here. So these three spots short entry ticket, short entry ticket, short entry ticket. We're going to make sure that we're buying our position back. And we're going to swap these values around. So here's 0.93 for take profit and 1.07 for stop loss. That is all. That is one cancels others in for future trading. So, what do we say? When our long entry ticket, when this when this is filled, come down here. Make sure it was actually that one getting filled. Because if it wasn't this one getting filled, that means that one of these got filled. Okay? So let's assume that this one got filled. We're gonna come and we're gonna store our entry time. We're gonna store the price. And we are going to send out our limit orders, our bracket orders. All right, now let's assume that the other thing happened. That means that one of these orders occurred and got filled. So we have to cancel the other and set our entry ticket back to none. So that way it's ready to um, trade again. Very simple. Now we're going to come up here and we're going to actually make our buy and sell conditions. So, first, first of all, to make sure that we're not just buying and just going to destroy our account, we have to check if we're already invested. And that is very simple. If our long entry ticket is none and our short entry ticket is none, that means that we're invested in something. That, I'm sorry, that means that we're not invested in something. So let's just make our conditions. So if we're going to use this symbol, so we say if self dot securities, if self dot securities, self dot symbol dot price, and we're going to multiply our price by 1.5. 3% greater than or equal to max value self dot buy future. And then we're going to say if price is greater than it times 0 0.97 min value short. I actually saw it, I, it comes to mind now. This line of code is from a YouTube channel called Trade Options with me. I'm not sure this whole line, but up to here. I know for a fact it's from a YouTube channel called Trade Options with me. They do, he, or in that video, he does history requests on SPY. And it's an actual history request. It's not a rolling window. And you don't get to learn about this part of that. I'll, 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 uh, excuse me, I'll link that video in the description as well because it did give me the idea for this, is that video, that that's why I'm making this video, is that the idea to do his algorithm, but with futures and rolling windows. And because it's just a good one to watch. So with that, oh, I actually, I don't even, I did this in such a hurry, I don't even have the code in that reference to cancel limit orders, I don't think so. Let me come into a different one I have. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I got lucky then on my back test. Wow, that's kind of funny. Okay. Let's check if our if we have our um if we have our order ticket just sitting out in the abyss and it's not getting filled and we need to cancel it. How do we do that? Well, first we have to check and see which one it is. So that long entry ticket is not. 
none. I'm going to type this and then explain it because it's a little bit. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to copy and paste it and then explain it because that'll be quicker. If time minus entry time dot days is greater than one and the order status is not filled, meaning that this has existed for over a day, for over one day, and it's still not filled, cancel it, is basically what that means. So that's all we need to do. We're going to reinitialize self dot entry time. We're going to cancel the open orders. I'm going to reset this variable to none. And it is the same exact thing for the course, just with our short entry ticket for our short entry ticket. So that's what that one. So that's what you would need for that one. And because this extended market hours equals true, it is not an actual whole day. I don't know what kind of time zone they go off of or how that works at all. Because in my live one that I have paper trading right now, I'll make an update on that in the future. Because I pause the other algorithm and I started a new one, get into it in that actual video. But however, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, totally lost my train of thought. That's the beauty of recording in one take. Regardless of any of that, this algorithm will now work. So. We can set our dates, 2021 to 2022, this will be a year. We're going to build and backtest it. And that is it. Congratulations, you just made a break of high or low rolling window trading algorithm with futures bracket orders. Um, okay. Probably just did a capital letter wrong or something. Yep, that's exactly what I did. Lowercase d, date time. I noticed that as soon as it came up with the error. Okay, beauty of recording in one take. And I think it's good for you guys as well because I can... Okay. In line one of two. Let's look at that. Okay, let's check it out. dot order ID. Again, I'm human and I do these things in one take. I hope that you guys can still understand and find value in these. Yep, there we go. There it is. Why does it look like that? Anyways, here, here we can see it though. Trades 26%. I mean, 20, uh, tw excuse me, trades 26 times. Why does it look like that? There we go. But yeah, there we go. And we can see in the time where it was a little um, sideways, it had no trades, and then we broke below. And yep, we broke below and we went short. And uh, our take profits were just a little too high. Let's, let's play around. Let's lower them to four. And then while this one runs, I want to talk about something else. So, why have I not uploaded a video in a while? I had a killer migraine last week, and school got a little overwhelming, so I decided to just take a little bit off. Yeah, it did improve it. It did improve it a little bit, actually. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> uh, like I said before, this I didn't expect this to be too great because um, it's the concept behind it that really matters, just getting used to using rolling windows for futures and learning how to do the bracket orders on futures is really what matters in this. But yeah, uh, about a half hour long video, you made a tr you made a whole futures trading algorithm in just a half hour, good job. Good job, I hope to see you back here for another one and I hope that you check out the other ones on my channel. If you guys have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. I hope that this one was easy for you guys to follow. Um, because of 
the issues I had last week. I kind of just wanted to get something out. And I do think I got this out in a good way. I think that this tape was not bad at all. I'm going to upload this one. So, hello. I hope you guys enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any suggestions, if you want me to talk about anything a little bit more, I'd be happy to explain it. I'm going to link everything, every reference that I could use in the description down below. Um, soon enough, at some point, I'll try and make a video updating my live algorithm because I did change it and this one's doing all right. Um, so yeah, that would be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you could leave a like and subscribe and a comment down below what you would like to see next, I'd appreciate it and I will do it for you. If not, I think that the next thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to calculate either Shannon Entropy or the first exponent. But yeah, besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video yet again. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.